I will show you the live streaming weekend meditation sessions live from the studios in Trinidad. The Upanishad series free will. There is a question that came as a response to one of the posts on Facebook page. I put it as a question to respond to it. Do souls have a separate identity after the experience of Samadhi? Do souls have a separate identity after the experience of Samadhi? There is another part to it. If not, how can one experience ultimate joy and bliss? These are two separate questions. The first question, what is important when someone puts a question? It reflects the state of the mind of the person. Sometimes it is individualistic. Sometimes it is cosmic in nature. Because you are part of this cosmic cyberspace, you represent that space. Do souls have a separate identity after the experience of Samadhi? Samadhi is a window. When there is a state of inner harmony and oneness, once there is equanimity, under each circumstance and situation, you experience something where you remain unaffected by whatsoever is happening. It can come to you as an experience. It is, it can be a momentary, it can last for a little longer time, but it is framed. Just as when you look at the sky, through the window of your room, you get a glimpse of outside. Certainly you do. But then you do not get the glimpse of the entire sky and you do not feel what you would when you come out of the room and you are under the open sky, the breeze is blowing, the wind as it comes rustling the tree leaves. There is tremendous joy and celebration all around. From the room you were not aware of all that was taking place outside. When you come out, you experience that. Samadhi is that framed experience. Watching everything. It can be a moment. All of a sudden, a situation of disabu comes. And you are in total harmony with the Divine Will. But this situation does not remain permanently. Enlightenment, on the other hand, refers to the situation when this inner state of equanimity, harmony, oneness and bliss becomes your permanent resting point. There is 
a total acceptance every moment. You are living in that state. Nothing disturbs you. Nothing bothers you. You are in a state of your own ecstasy. Your own world. It's not that you are unaware of all that is happening all around. You are happening. You are aware of all that is happening. But behind all that is happening, you are seeing a great, a bigger cosmic play going on. A cosmic play going on. And that which takes place is a state of Samadhi. There is no panic, there is no worry if it is happening, happening. So when it says, do souls have a separate identity after experience of Samadhi? Number one, it does and it does not. It does in the sense, you look at the river merging in the ocean. River has water flowing through it. Water has many drops. Each drop when it merges into the ocean, it immediately loses its identity. It loses its identity as long as it wants to remain the part of the ocean. As long as you, the drop decides to remain the part of the ocean, its identity is lost, it has merged into the ocean. But then, there is an, another aspect of it. If there is, the drop has to be taken out and you have to take out a little bit of water from the ocean. It is some total of certain drops. Now I will switch back to the question. You are a drop like a drop in the vastness of the ocean of the existence. When you experience that, you are experience oneness or harmony, there is no difference. Just as there is a canopy of darkness and a canopy of light, there is no difference. Then you are a part of that totality. You have merged into it. There are certain beings who decide to remain in that and do not come out to share their experiences. When you have to come out and share your experiences, you have to use your voice. I cannot use your voice. I cannot use your voice modulation or anything. Everything that I have to use, it has to be through the instrument of body, mind and intellect. Intellect or the intelligence helps to frame the sentences, choice of the language, choice of the words, the modulation, merging with the breath, creating the music, all these things are individualistic. So when it comes to operate into the outer world of objects and beings, how do I interact with you? I must use my voice, I must use my voice modulation, choice of the words. This is individualistic. But as far as the experience is concerned, the experience is cosmic. 
just as you go to a place which is well known for honeymoon and it is the honeymoon season many couples go for honeymoon each one of them is staying in their separate room but the experience will be more or less same but when they come to ex express or explain their experiences it will have an individualistic it will have an individualistic approach individualistic texture this is the difference souls have it is not the soul it is because soul is formless existence and that which is formless unborn and unmanifest it operates only through the instrument of body mind intellect you cannot see my breath but when breath without breaking continues to merge and overflow as words it creates music and overall the sum total of this can be put as an energy field it works within you as an energy field the modulation of the words of the sound the breath the choice of the words their arrangements all these create an energy field so when that space that you have experience or within comes to manifest it creates an energy field and it is that energy field works it can be understood in another way the do souls have a separate identity after enlightenment after samadhi or i will put it as after enlightenment enlightenment means coming out of the prison of the body and the mind and coming under the open sky coming out of your narrow individualistic room into the open space that is that surrounds you it is like this you had a dilapidated building where you was that was your residence and you were living in that place you decide to change the structure this building was divided into many rooms many work areas the kitchen area the restroom area the living room area the porch the garden and all these things there were bedrooms which were occupied by different red persons living in that house when you were staying in that building the building was intact the rooms were separated by the had their separate space and they were bounded by the walls to maintain the privacy but the moment you decide to renovate or restructure the house the first and the foremost thing that is necessary is to break down the house the moment you break down the house does that space that was encased within an individual room has its separate identity no it the moment the walls are broken the prison walls are broken everything becomes one space one space and it immediately merges in the, the outer space although you know according to the the terminology used in the construction industry it is said that you have to know your boundaries so this particular piece of land belongs to you it has its boundaries 
in technical terms it is called you have to know the points so that you do not encroach upon somebody else land and find yourself into a legal battle with the person that is a different kind of anatomy but in field of spirituality the moment you come out of that prison the inner space merges into the outer space so there is no separate identity the moment you merge but it remains there as long as you your structure has not come the moment the structure comes in every single space is redefined in the light of the new process of construction it is being redefined you were living a particular kind of life but after enlightenment your life moves in a totally different manner different words different energy feel you have created a new you and for that reason you are being redefined your breathing is redefined because there is no chaos within so breathing is not haphazard it seems like one continuous long breath unending without beginning and without end just in the middle of continuity the words express themselves writing that in a breath this is individualistic so in the process it is individualistic when it comes to continue the work of the trans work for the transformation of human consciousness i have to use my words but the message comes from the unknown and an unknowable the message comes from that harmony that i have experienced that oneness that i am but the voice is individualistic the moment i speak you recognize yes this is the voice of thousand but the message is not mine it is coming through me but it is the music it is the message of the unknown it is the message of the inner harmony that is being manifested through the individual consciousness through the words so souls have a separate identity only when you have to operate into the outer world of objects and beings to carry on the process of transformation of human consciousness i had chosen the topic free will how to see what is my will and god's will and what is the difference between the two there is a chinese saying man is puppet when he acts man is a puppet when he acts a poet when he describes all that you think is your free will nothing but your poetry all that you think is your freedom is nothing but your poetry you are unconscious an unconscious man cannot be free nor have any freedom freedom really comes as a consequence as an outcome freedom is a function of consciousness and an unconscious man exists like a machine like a robot you may not know 
but you are continuously forgetting as a robot in a certain mechanical way. There is nothing new. Somebody abuses you and anger arises. It is almost like when you push the button and the fan starts moving. The other has the remote control for your TV screen. And we very clearly say that man gets me angry, my husband gets me mad, my wife gets me mad. Are you a puppet? Or, or have you given the remote control to the other? Just as if you are holding a remote control in your hand, you point the remote control towards the TV screen, and you can change the channels. Are you a puppet in the hands of the husband? We never ponder over it and we consider ourselves very wise. My husband makes me really mad or that person makes me angry. Somebody pushes the button and you become angry. What kind of freedom is this? Do you not have any choice to be angry or not to be angry, to be happy or not to be happy? If there is no choice, how can there be freedom? The freedom exists with one who is not bothered. Freedom means freedom to choose. You can decide whether to be angry or not, then you are free, but you can decide, but can you decide? At the most you can decide to show your anger and or not, that is another thing. But to be angry or not to be angry is your choice. There is a difference between the two. At the most, you can decide to show your anger or not is another matter. But to be angry or not to be angry is your choice. There are two things. First is, to be angry or not to be angry, to be happy or not to be happy, this is your choice. Now. If I have to correct something and in order to correct that particular situation, I have to use anger as a tool, then this is my choice to use anger as a tool, but I am not conditioned by that anger. This is the reason that I have included the message of the Nakshbandi Sheikh. Sufi Shakuntala Devi in Nakshbandi Kalma for the commandments. It is the statements of the masters of the past that are used as a kalma or the commandment, the spiritual commandments. She comes in the category of the Nakshbandi Sheikhs. Hazrat Ibda Khali gives the money and Hazrat Shah Bahauddin Nakshband Razilatalawno has given certain commands. Eight were given by Hazrat Ibda Khali Gizdwani, Nazar Var Kadam Hosh Dardam. Nazar Var Kadam means your vision is focused on your feet, you are walking. If your vision is not focused on your feet, you may stumble. Hosh Dardam. Every moment you are up. You are conscious of your breath that comes in and breath goes out. If you are really interested in knowing the details of it, I have made my books available to anyone who is interested in, in PDF format, free for download. You have to go to the Facebook page, Tausho Buddha Meditations International, and on the in the icon, 
there is a video icon where the videos are available for you to watch there is a next icon files in that when you click that you have open the folder of the books in pdf format you can review these if you wish to download you can download there is no charge for it it is totally free and in the book leaves from the sufi heart volume 1 there is a chapter on sufi kalmat or spiritual commandments so this commandment or kalma is a way to attain freedom of choice and without this you cannot grow in awareness the moment somebody pushes your button and you are angry instantly not a single moment is lost in the person pushing the button and the anger arising on the screen because there is a very infinitesimal time gap between the two happenings pushing the remote button and the screen changing sometimes the screen do get stuck so that's a different matter altogether you may not show it that is another thing you may control and repress your anger that is also another thing but anger has flashed in your being and about that you have no choice you function like a machine i have heard a sufi parable once upon a time there was a magnet and in its close neighborhood lived some steel fillings one day two or three fillings felt a sudden desire to go and visit the magnet and they began to talk of what a pleasant thing it would be to do the other fillings nearby heard their conversation and they too became infected with the same desire still others joined them till at last till at last all the feelings began to discuss the matter and more and more their vague desire grew into an impulse why not go today said one of them why not go today said one of them but others were of the opinion that it would be better to wait till tomorrow meanwhile without their having noticed it they had been involuntarily moving nearer to the magnet which lay there quite still apparently taking no heed of them and so they went on discussing all the time insensibly drawing nearer to their neighbor and the more they talked the more they felt the impulse growing stronger till the more impatient ones declared that they would go that day whatever whatever the rest did some were hurt to say it was their duty to visit the magnet and that they ought to have gone long ago and while they talked they moved always nearer and nearer without realizing that they had moved close to the magnet this is what happens sometimes to you when you come in the company of the master you may not talk about spirituality you may talk about ordinary day to day things you require how things are this and that and you do not realize that you are pulling towards him beyond your control 
then so this is what happened to those iron fingers. Then at last the impatient ones prevailed and with one irresistible impulse the whole body cried out, there is no use waiting, we will go now, we will go now, we will go at once and then there in one unanimous mass they swept along and in another moment were clinging fast to the magnet on every side. Then the magnet smiled, but the small feelings had no doubt at all, but that they were paying the visit of their own free will. When unconsciousness, when unconscious, you do not have any will, also there is no freedom, so do not think about it. You ask how to see what is my will and God's will. You have none. God is the magnet and you are the iron fillings. God is the magnet and you are the iron fillings. But you go on behaving that you have your own will, your own choice. You think that you have chosen this woman to be your wife or this person to be your husband. Think that it again. And remember this parable. Have you chosen this woman or was it just an accident? There is a power within that knows beyond our knowings that you are constantly being pulled towards that person. You are constantly being pulled toward us, towards that person. Think about it again and remember this parable. Have you chosen this woman or man? Or was it just an accident? Have you chosen? Was there really any choice in it? Or had you been a victim of a certain impulse called love? I see. You were a victim of a certain impulse called love. Was it possible for you then not to choose? Was it your decision? Then you will see that it has not been so. Whatsoever has happened in your life has happened more or less accidentally. And do not laugh at the other iron feelings that are the situations of the humanity. But you can rise out of your unconsciousness, then you will have a will, but you will not be there. You will disappear in that moment when your will merges into that of the divine will. When the drop merges into the ocean, you will disappear. Because in consciousness you cannot remain, you can remain only as an unconscious. That inner space which is encased within, known as the bedroom, is there because it is present. Unconsciousness creates a prison and consciousness gives you an open space of freedom, open space to frisk gaily under the vastness of the sky, feeling the breeze wrapping your the sheet that is trying to unravel with the flow of the winds. Because in, in consciousness you cannot remain, you can remain only in unconsciousness. Now let me make it clear, when you are, you have no will. In unconsciousness the ego exists but there is no will. 
In a state of unconsciousness, you exist, but there is no will. In consciousness, the will exists, but ego disappears. In consciousness, the will exists, but ego disappears. Then there is no point of asking the question, my will and God's will. The question becomes irrelevant. This question is the outcome of unconsciousness. Suddenly a thought flashed to your mind, is my will and the divine will are separate? Yes, indeed, because you are in an unconscious state. In consciousness, the will exists, but ego does not. Ego dissolves. Then there is no point of asking my will and the divine will or God's will. Then there is no distinction between you and God. You are God and God is you. The drop is ocean, the ocean has, is drop. These are the two stages, two shores of the enlightenment, which in Sufi terminology called fana. When the drop merges into the ocean, it loses its identity, the ego vanishes from a narrow individualistic cell. It comes out and merges into the vastness of the ocean. And then immediately the other shock happens, the ocean lends its magnanimity, its quality to the drop. Drop becomes, the ocean becomes drop, but first Drop becomes ocean. This is the state when consciousness, the drop is merging into the ocean. You as a drop is merging into the ocean that we can call it God. And the moment it merges into consciousness is there but there is no ego. The ego is the individual drop and then there is no point in asking. Then there is no distinction, distinction between you and God. You are God and God is you. The drop is ocean and the ocean is drop. First the drop becomes ocean and then second thing that happens is the ocean becomes the drop. The whole problem can be reduced to a simple thing to be conscious of, not to be conscious. Unconscious man exists without any will. He only dreams that he has his will. Your will is the outcome of your unconscious functioning. With consciousness, ego starts disappearing on one hand and on the other, other hand, will starts arising. Remember, with consciousness, ego starts disappearing on one hand and on the other, will starts arising. But it will not be your will instead, it will always be God's will. Then what is the difference between conscious man and con then what is the difference between an unconscious man and the conscious man? The difference is that of God's will. The unconscious man thinks it is my will and the conscious man knows I am not. Only God is. It is God's will, not my will. My will has merged into that of God's will and God's will manifests itself through the screen that I am, whatever was to happen, happened. The difference always is that of God's will, the unconscious man thinks it is my will and the conscious man knows I am not, only God is. So it cannot be my will, instead it is God's will.